in today's show. I'm here live on the old YouTube to answer your questions. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need or you don't want and can even help negotiate better deals on the ones that you want to keep. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Hello, everyone. We are here live on YouTube, and I am going to answer questions that you guys have for the next 30 minutes or so. So uh, why don't we get in and have a look at what questions do we got? First one, Travis Knight. Did Josh just wake up? Uh, no, about an hour and a half ago, mate. It's uh, 8 a.m. here. So fair enough, but I've been up since about 6. Not, not, that, not that long ago. Um, Josh didn't shower yet. Of course I did, mate. I just need a haircut. That's all it is. My hair is just too long to like do anything. I need to go get it cut tomorrow. Mate, I shower every day. Never, never missing a shower. What are you talking about? Um, all right. What do, what, what questions do we do that actually are fantasy basketball related here or NBA related? Um, it's an interesting question. What are the chances that Ben Simmons gets traded before New Year's Eve? I would say it's very, very low before New Year's Eve. Just very, very few trades get done that aren't in the week of the trade deadline. Very few. You might have... Simmons might be the exception. I'm not holding my breath for it, though. Should I move Kevin Porter Jr. for Alperin Shangun? Should you? I don't know. I'm not here on any of these shows to tell you guys what to do and what not to do, but it is an interesting discussion. I would say that in general, I'm just, and they're very different players, of course, right? You've got point guards versus centers. I would say in general, I feel really confident that Porter's going to play 30 plus minutes every night. I don't have that confidence with Shingun, even though he is a better per minute producer. I probably wouldn't, but I also don't think that it's a, um, that it's one to rule out completely. Okay, Joaquin Sandoval, I'm interested to know how you feel about Evan Mobley. Is he leaning towards becoming a future top 20 fantasy player? Yeah, I think so. I think he'll be a top 20, top 15 player um, towards the end of his rookie scale contract, personally. I think he's going to be an absolute monster. Think of the value that someone like Carl Anthony Towns brings. I reckon you might be able to get that from Evan Mobley. I'm really, really excited about what he's going to bring. Um... Abdurrahman Yasa Yasha. What about OG's situation and being questionable? Yeah, he's ready to come back. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So why we, we talked. Yeah, you know, so many people asked me, "Hey, should I drop OG?" No, no, you shouldn't have. And it's pretty exciting that he is getting ready to return. And maybe it's not next game, but you would think by the start of next week we get Ananobi ready, and that's sick. And then how it impacts everything else on the team remains to be seen. But what about Scarf? OG. Bl- stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Um, Vin Lai. Can we drop Robinson in New York, even if Nerlens is made of glass? I don't know why it bothers me so much, Vin. This is not you, but I hate the term made of glass. It annoys me so much, and I don't know why it does. But yes, you can drop Robinson. Bef- even when Robinson was starting, he wasn't a must roster player. Right? And that had nothing to do with Noel being there or not being there. He just wasn't doing anything that was good. He's a specialist for field goal percentage, really, because his blocks aren't as super high. They're still pretty good, but that's it. Some teams, that will make a lot of sense. Other teams, it makes no sense. The fact that his minutes are so low are frustrating. Um, it's not the wrong decision to hold him, but yeah, look, don't feel like you have to be married to him and you have to hold on to him forever. French Francisco Ennis, do I think the league at some point will be suspended? No, I do not at all. I don't think that's going to happen not even remotely close to it 
A, it doesn't solve a problem. B, it creates more problems. C, we had way more game postponements last season. Way more. No, I think there's no chance that the league is getting um, suspended. Marvin Six, can I rank Kyrie for nine cat leagues? Yes, I can. You can go and have a look at basketballmonster.com, but it's almost impossible with Kyrie. Because was he going to play? Two games? 50 games? I don't know. Like, And rankings are almost... Um, they can cause more harm than good. All right, thanks, Mr. Pink. I have a love-hate relationship with your show. Some of the things you say are questionable. Okay, what does that mean? You want to give an example of one of those things that I say that's questionable? Um, all right. Jordan Johnson. Hey, Josh, do you think Cade Cunningham can have a better rookie year than LaMelo Ball's rookie year? I'm going to look at LaMelo Ball's rookie year. What is he? I think around top 50. I think that there is a pretty good chance. Um, I think there's a pretty good chance that he, he can, yes. Joe Arico, do you think Ben Simmons will face backlash if or when he gets traded and resumes playing right away for faking or exaggerating his mental illness? Do I think he'll get backlash? Yes. Do I think it's legit or do I think, do I think it's fair? No. Because you know, who, who are we to say that he's faking his mental illness? Because uh, let, me, let me tell you one thing. Okay, Ben Simmons doesn't feel mentally ready to play for the Sixers. That's the key part there. He doesn't like his situation. It's negatively impacting him mentally. The thing that's causing the mental issue is the situation. The situation gets removed. He probably feels better. I don't think that's a... Does that mean he's faking it if he's mentally ready to play for another team? No. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Obviously, he didn't like how things went down at the end of last season in the playoffs. And he doesn't like he doesn't like the situation and the environment there. Is there maybe some exaggeration? Maybe, but him going to another team and starting to play straight away doesn't in any way indicate that he's full of shit. It just doesn't. Um, okay. Tejas Desai says, will Okong will have any value this season? For deeper leagues, I'm sure he will, but he's not going to push into 12 or 14 team leagues. Like He's not going to come out there and play 24 minutes a night. He'll get some backup minutes. Remember, they're not really playing a backup center a lot of the time. They're just using John Collins. Like Gorgie Jang barely plays. A Kong will play a little bit more than that, but maybe it's 12 minutes a night, 10 minutes a night. I really like him long-term, but I don't think he's going to just roll in and play yeah, 20 a night and limit Capella and, and play and remove, 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 that's the word, remove all of the minutes that uh, John Collins is playing at center. I, I just don't know um, how that's going to go down. But I do know what's going to go down, and that is me telling you that Truebill is the thing that you need because we know that we've signed up for so many subscriptions. We have a subscription here and a subscription there. And can you keep track of them all? Nah, because these companies often are just trying to get that money off you. So these free trials that turn into ongoing subscriptions, it's still in your money. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions that you don't need or you don't want or the ones that you simply forgot about. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. On average, people save up to 720 bucks per year using Truebill. And your Truebill concierge, always there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped save them over $100 million. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Another question. Prab Baines, do I think a Sabonis trade happens soon after the news report about him wanting out? No, I, I cannot stress again enough that these reports and rumors, it doesn't mean jack shit. Right? It, it just doesn't. Like, Let's wait and see what happens. And we head to the middle of February and Demonta Sabonis is still in Indiana. This happens every single year about these reports. He might get traded, sure. But it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen overnight. Um, it, it just doesn't. And who knows how true this report is, whether it's agents angling things. There's so many different factors that go into it. So I would just advise everyone to take anything like this with a grain of salt, especially when it's coming from Bleacher Report, especially. Like if you get Woj saying, teams are moving towards the final step on a trade for DeMontis Sabonis, take notice. There are Mark Stein, Shams, Chris Haynes, another guy who's getting a little bit of traction on that stuff recently, Jake Fisher. But a vague report like that, where it's saying he maybe wants out, I don't think that means that it's happening. That's If you have your default position of ignoring that stuff and assuming it won't happen, you will win a vast majority of the time just by ignoring that. 
Um, okay. Where do I think Simmons goes? I, I honestly, I can't work it out. I, I, I don't know. I, I think there is a chance of Sacramento, but I, I don't know. MK Flight 23, how worried am I about Harrison Barnes maintaining 12-team viability? A little, but not really. I think he is going to maintain 12-team value. My major worry with Barnes is if they do decide to trade him away and he moves into a role where he doesn't play 35 minutes and doesn't have the usage that he does in Sacramento. That's my big concern. I think if he stays in Sacramento, he will maintain that level of value, hopefully. Um. Okay, what else have we got going on here? Is Franz looking like a drop? Qua, why? Why would he be looking like a drop? For what reason? He's a top 50 player over the last two weeks. If you can afford to drop a player like that, then you must be pretty strong. Jonathan Laufa, uh, do I think Embiid plays and I rolled his ankle yesterday? I Look, he's currently listed as playing. I, I do think he will play because they lost yesterday, but I, I'm, I am worried. I, I'm not 100% on it. I think he'll play, but I'm not 100% on that. Owen Kinduris, will Trey maintain the great numbers he's been putting up? I'd love to be able to know that, but I can't. Do I think he can? Sure. I, I've got no reason to suggest he's going to drop a significant amount off. His shooting numbers, some of that is probably a bit unsustainable, but he's good. He's going to have the minutes, the usage, and the assist. That's all going to stay. So he's going to be around that level, I would guess. Karkafi, chances the Raptors shut down their veterans if they are 10th seed like last year? Again, I think just getting into this sort of stuff and discussing it now and thinking about it, it just it does way more harm to your fantasy team than good. Is that a possibility? Sure. But last year was a very different set of circumstances in that they weren't in Toronto. Now, I know Toronto's instituted a situation where there's some crowd caps on games. But I also think that if they are, you're going to be able to play at home and have a crowd there. They will continue to play for the playoffs and, and get there. They won't just be as egregiously not caring about the playing as they were last year. But I also don't think there's any reason to be like making deals um, you know, to trade players away based on something that may or may not happen. I think it just, it, it just hurts so much in the long run. Okay, what else have we got going on here? Hmm. All right, let's do this one. King Wizard, can you explain the yelling sound that is played after Harrison Barnes? Barnesy. I know some of these sounds are obscure. So what this is, right? This is a song called Big Enough. You may have seen the meme of the screaming cowboy. All right, that screaming cowboy in the in that song Big Enough. Go listen to Big Enough. Hilarious song. Um, that guy screaming in the background, his name is Jimmy Barnes. Barnsey, as he's affectionately known, Australian singer. Like, his name's Barnsey. Barnsey, Barnsey. There you go. That's what it is. Hmm. Felix Pryor, will Vooch return to top 30 value or has his value permanently tanked? I wouldn't say permanently, but I don't think that a top 30 finish for Vooch is realistic, personally. I think he's probably just outside that. Joe, this is very similar to what I've been saying. Do I think fantasy managers should be trying to trade Rashawn Holmes and get some value before this gets out of hand? I think if you're doing, like, if you're making these moves and I'm going to trade guys away because I think a fake blow up or shut down or something's going on, it hurts you way more than if you just held on. Like panic trades like that based on nebulous information. It just doesn't work out that way. So no, I don't think you should be trying to trade with Sean Holmes because you think that maybe he is traded or the Kings blow it up or whatever. I just don't think that that is realistic at all. Well, I mean, you can trade him if you want, but only if you get value back. Um, any teams that I hate watching? At the moment, I hate watching the Knicks. They're, they are so frustrating to watch. They're probably the team that I hate watching the most at the moment. I'm not also loving watching Miami at the moment for some reason. I don't know why they're annoying me. Um, who else do I like? Any West Western Conference teams that I don't really like? You're watching the Thunder is always pretty rough. Do we have more info on the Kings COVID outbreak? Nothing at this stage. No. The Mazinator. Do I think McCollum getting traded within the next month or Portland wait until they sort of their GM position? Yeah, look, that, that does lead to some problems. The uncertainty of whether Joe Cronin is going to be the permanent GM there. 
But I, I also think, again, I wish I could just get this idea out of people's heads in fantasy leagues, is that you know, obsessing about trades happening in the NBA, it just... You're better off just letting that shit fly, ignoring it, and when something happens, reacting to it. Because all, every year, without fail... 90% of the trades that go down are ones that you've never heard of and you had no idea were going to happen and then you've got to make that adjustment anyway. So pre-planning all of this stuff or thinking about it, it's a, it's a large waste of mental energy, I think. Um, do I think CJ gets traded? Look, the odds would just tell me no. Tay just says, do I want Trey or Luca now in real life? Luca, nothing has changed there. Manny Cruz, would I trust Kessler Edwards this weekend while the team is out? Trust is a, is a tough word, and I'm not sure he's earned our trust, but will I be happy enough to take a crack at it? Yeah. I really like what he did, and these guys aren't coming back this week. So, yeah, like there's a there's good value for Kessler Edwards, for sure. All right. What else has got? Just did news just come through of something interesting? Russell Westbrook in the health and safety protocols. There you go. Isaac Okoro in the health and safety protocols. There we go. There's some news. Let's have a look. Evan Lada. There's one thing I hate more than anything. It's shutdown candidate. I hate the term. I hate it. I can't stand it. And it gets overblown and overused. Why is he shooting so bad? That I don't know. I don't know why he's... Like, he's under 30% from three this season. I don't know why he's shooting so poorly. It makes me feel like there is going to be some pretty good um, regression coming or positive regression or just improvement maybe, if you want to use that phrase. Eight to his shooting. But yeah, I hate the term shutdown counter. It annoys me so much. All right. What else have we got here? Have we heard anything about a Jar Morant return? Of course we haven't. Absolutely no no word whatsoever from those um, stinking bastards, the Grizzlies. They tell us nothing. Absolutely nothing. But all I'm going to tell you about, though, is a way to get your energy levels up. It's Christmas time. Do you need the fuel to get through a Christmas lunch with your family? Do you need the fuel to get through shopping at the mall? You need Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. I hope you blokes who are here live in the chat have tried Built Bar because I'm not lying to you. It tastes amazing. What's your favorite? Is it cookies and cream? I love it. Coconut, raspberry, strawberry, mint brownie. One of the special ones. Candy cane flavor they had. I think they had a gingerbread one come out. It's unbelievable. We can get passionate. I can get fired up about talking about my favorite flavor of Built Bar. What about those marshmallowy type treats that they got? There's so many great things that Built Bar has. These are the things that you need to stuff into your stockings of your family. Your family's gonna go, "What, Josh? What are you doing? Why is there so many protein bars in my stocking?" Just trust me, taste it, then get back to me, and then I'm the king for the day. Can I service your boots, sir? Would you like another serving of food? You're the man who provided Built Bar to this family, and it almost becomes like a religion. So, Built Bar, go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15. And you get yourself a taste of those delicious Built Bars. Built Bar, built different. We are heading towards the NFL playoffs. And Bet Online has you covered all season for props and lines and odds and contests. And it remains also your number one spot for all sports this season. So head to the new updated desktop or use the mobile side and sign up today by getting a 50% match welcome deposit bonus by using our code LOCKEDON. From basketball to football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, next question. Um, let's do. Let's have a look. Renan Guedes is Zion Mustache. I mentioned this the other day. I honestly don't think you can. I don't know when he's coming back. I know he's reevaluated in four to six weeks. That doesn't mean he's returning then. I don't think there's any point in holding him personally. All right, Bruce Wayne Batman says, this is a perfect chance for Isaiah Thomas. Westbrook's in protocols. Yeah, let's also remember that Isaiah Thomas has not been good for five or six years. Oh, he had 40 in the G League. Yeah, sure, so did Saban Lee. All right, Isaiah Thomas, he's on a 10-day contract for a hardship exemption for the Lakers. He is not going to... Be, look, if you want to stream Isaiah in, by all means, with Westbrook out, stream him in. That's about it, right? Long-term value, I just think there is no way that he is coming in 
playing 35 a night, taking usage away from Westbrook, James, and Davis. It is just no chance of happening. Even with Westbrook out, like, is Thomas coming in and, and taking doing enough to be useful? No, this is going to be James and Davis, whereas Isaiah is going to play a marginal role, I would guess. I could be wrong on that. I hope I'm wrong. It looks like a good bloke. But again, people froth this guy so hard that it, it does lead to me feeling like I'm just constantly being negative and pushing back on him. Because I'm trying to be realistic about my expectations of where he's going to sit and what he's going to do for you know the, the time that he's here. It just, it's been so long and he's had opportunities in Cleveland, opportunities with the Lakers in the past, with the Wizards, and he hasn't been anywhere near good enough. And I don't think that another two years removed is going to make him good enough at an NBA level. Happy for you guys to disagree with it. And I'd like to see if anyone wants to disagree with that. But that's it. Albert J is a top 70 finish for Giddy Realistic this season. I think that's probably a little bit too high. Yeah, I think that's probably too high. Hayden Nankin. Do I think Cole Anthony remains must roster for the rest of the season? Yeah, I'd be pretty surprised if he wasn't. Um, should I look to trade in the eight-team category league? Look, I don't know what's going to happen with Marco Fultz returning, but Anthony's done enough in these 30 games to establish himself as a starting point guard. So I wouldn't be trading just based on a wishy-washy idea that maybe shit goes wrong later on. I'd be very, very happy to um, hold on to him. Um, Bones Highland's going to play on Friday. He was out for disciplinary reasons. That's why he was out of the rotation last game. Peters 2K is Cameron Johnson 12 team while Devin Booker is out? Yes. Um... Michelle Simmons, do I think Sadiq Bay could be a worthwhile stash while Jeremy Grant's at? No, he's bad. He's really bad. Uh, and no, I don't think there's anything more than streaming him in. He's like a 14 to 16 team league guy. Do not worry with him in 12s. Isaac Smith, is your opinion on Burke's recent struggle, just the player he is, or he is the player he was the first couple of starts? Well, he shot like, what, 22% or something last game? Like, that's not who he is. He's a better shooter than that. He will be better than the last couple of games. He also won't be as good as that first game or two. Evan Lada, what is my breakdown of Rob Williams? Um, should we be holding, hoping he gets going, or should we look for a trade? Again, if he is struggling, trading him away is the worst time. It's the worst time to do it. Why would you trade someone away if you are frustrated with how bad they are? I am not convinced he goes back and plays 30 a night. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think you're you just pr pretty much just going to have to ride it out. And then maybe if he starts to improve, then you can go from there. And, and then maybe you can trade. What are my thoughts on Franz struggling in these last two games? Eh, it just happens, man. Like Players will just struggle, especially rookies. He was playing way above his head. And the last two games have been a struggle. He's just a guy that we hold and we, and we, you know, we understand there's going to be lots of ups and downs for him. What is the points league settings when you mention it? It is default NBA Yahoo scoring. The NBA, the official, the league put out a few years ago, here is our recommended default point scoring system. And when the NBA fantasy account put stuff out and Yahoo adopted it and FanDuel adopted it, some other sides don't. So I cannot go through possibly in any way and go, well, in this sort of points league, he averages this, and in this one, he averages this, and this one, he averages this, and if you've got missed shots, he averages this, and this one, he averages this. It's impossible, right? So I've just got to throw it out with the default points setting. If you want more specific information, you go to Basketball Monster, you can customize everything there, and you can see the player's production, the player's projections based on your settings. But what I do is the default Yahoo and NBA and FanDuel point scoring system. It's the only one I can really get away with doing, I think. Um, Jonathan Zouch, do I think Scotty Barnes is going to end up being as hot as he is? I do not. No, I do not. As I said that a million times. No way. Um, OC, do I think Markel Fultz has any value in a 12-team nine-cat league? Are the Magic more likely to invest in Anthony and Suggs? Well, they've invested in um, Fultz to a degree with his contract. Not that it's a huge contract. In a 12-team league, I'd be really, really surprised. He's coming back from an ACL injury. He has never been like a top-level fantasy player anyway. He's got a player like Cole Anthony and Suggs there as well. 
I honestly just don't think there's going to be any way outside of injuries to those other guys that he's, and his recovery, which might take a month after he returns anyway, um, to get there. I just don't think there's any chance. Is Melton a drop in a 14-team league? No, I would hold him in a 14. Um, let's see, what another question? Alon Arnaldis, is Keldon Johnson a drop in category 8 and 10 team? 8 team leagues? Yeah, what are you doing? 10 team league? Yeah, clear drop. He's not even a 12 team league guy, I don't think. Michelle Simmons, now that Bagley is out with COVID, who do I think has a better long-term upside, Bagley or Simons? Simons, very easily. I don't think Bagley is good in the slightest. RKO Sial, do I think the NBA and NBA PA is doing enough to curb the spread of COVID? Do you think they could be doing anything better considering a large amount of the league is in protocols? Well, it's not a large amount. Like it's only what? It might be 10%, less than 10%, 8%, something like that. It's not a large, large amount. It's obviously a concerning amount. Um, could they be doing things better? Sure. I don't know what that is. Like you got to also be able to understand that like players aren't going to want to be locked up in their house consistently. And that's got to be something that gets negotiated. It's obviously frustrating. I think some stuff has to change with what they're doing in terms of testing, um, how long they have to be out, all that sort of stuff. I, I, do, I don't know enough about what the actual protocols they have in place are to make comments on what needs to change specifically, but it does feel like things need to need to change, yes. Fabrizio Devona, could Juice McBride be a good stream today with Knox out? He'd get even more minutes on last match where he played 20. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good call. I, I like McBride. Um, I think there's a real opportunity for him here. Yes, I think he's a good stream. We've only four games on as well. All right, we're going to do a couple more questions. Full took like he'd taken a huge step before he got hurt. Yeah, but if you look at the numbers last season before he got hurt, they weren't that good. The season before, he did improve for sure. But the last year before he got hurt, he actually wasn't playing that well. I don't think anyway, from memory. Probably should have looked at that. Any thoughts on Ricky Rubio? Yeah, he's very, very attractive. All right, what else have we got going on? Any chance, Xander says, any chance Nurkic can average 30 minutes a night? Look, is there a chance? Sure. Should he? Yes. Will he? Almost definitely not. I would love him to. I just really don't think that Portland's going to go down that route, um, unfortunately. Um, okay. Hey, Josh, they said CJ McCollum is improving. He can do light conditioning. Buswell wants to project the return date to be right after Christmas. Are you projecting the same timeline? What's that? What are we talking about? Like a week away? Nah, nah no way. There's no way I don't think he's back in a week. And I don't. I didn't change it on Buswell Monster. Someone else must have. He's being reevaluated in a week. I just... Reevaluation often gets misinterpreted for you are coming back. I would be shocked if he's back before January. We'll see. Um, don't get your hopes up that he's back before then. What impact will Rui Hachimura have on the Wizards minutes? Well, it's just going to reduce the minutes of Bertans, of Avdia, of Kuzma, of Caldwell Pope. They'll all lose a little bit of time and Hachimura's not going to play as much as he did last year because again, he is not that good. Um, all right, what else have we got? Is there an NBL fantasy league? Yeah, there are. There are. Yes. Josh, do you listen to other fantasy podcasts? I, I do not. No, I don't. I don't for numerous reasons. Not that I don't respect those guys that do it. You see, like Ramble Shoe, like yeah. There's, there's, um, yeah, Matt and yeah, Matt Straup over there, and Steve who does it, and there's Dan at, at Hoop Ball, and there's all all those guys. There's Mitch on the Ball Boys channel. I, I don't listen to them. A, I don't have time. B, I try and make sure that all of my thoughts and ideas are my thoughts and ideas and they're not based on, hey, I heard something somewhere else. So I, I don't listen to them. I download all their episodes, help boost their numbers up. Um, but I I, def, I don't listen to, I just don't have time to, to do that sort of stuff. But I would recommend, like, apart from listening to this show, listen to this one first, go listen to other ones, get some differing opinions and make up your own mind. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. 
I'm here to tell you what I think should be done or even just provide context or information around situations and then providing you the tools to make those decisions. How long is Rashawn Holmes out? I don't know. He could be back next game. Will Barton is trending down. Is he still a must hold? Yeah, definitely a must hold to me. Let's get a couple more questions in. Um, just trying to see what sell Cole Anthony. Yeah, I mean, always be receptive to trading guys away. But Anthony's in a bit of a slump. He's also dealing with an ankle injury. Probably the worst time to trade him away. In general, with a guy like that, you're just not going to get back that top 30 value that he was producing. So you just hold. And the chances of him continuing that, I think are higher than you or anyone else will expect when offering a trade compensation package. Dinesh Aslam, any key players for the second half of the season on tanking teams? Again, it's one of those ones where you're looking at this stuff and if you're trying to do it too far in advance, it burns you and you're just not going to get any value out of that. Yeah, the guys that I look at, obviously Shangun in Houston, um, Trey Mann maybe in Oklahoma City, Josh Christopher in Houston, Davion Mitchell in Sacramento, but adding them and holding them now, it's just going to burn you. Not Shangun, obviously, he's a must roster player. Let's do one more question. OG Skin, do I think Tyrese Maxey can continue trending upwards even with Embiid in? Now, remember, a trend is not one game. He played well last game. Go back and look at his games before that. Was he trending up? No, no he wasn't. With the overall idea with Maxey is when Embiid is out, right, his usage will go up. When Embiid is in, his usage goes down. And then the value just depends on, is he on a hot streak shooting or is he on a cold streak shooting? He'll have good games with Embiid. He'll have poor games without Embiid. But he's not currently trending up. Must hold player, yes, but just be really careful trying to um, in not invent, but to try and extrapolate stuff that isn't exactly there. That will do it for today's show, guys. Thanks for being a part of the show, as always. Thanks for asking great questions, and thanks always for supporting this channel and this podcast. So follow it along on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. And on the Odyssey app, if you are here on YouTube, and I know you that you're here because I can see you here, why don't you chuck a thumbs up on the way out? Give it a nice thumb up on the way out. That'd be great. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. Guys, I'm back. I haven't gone just yet. There's, I know some of you are still here. Just a little bit of a sneak, sneak uh, ad here. I've stopped actually recording the audio part of the podcast. But there is hundreds of people of you in here. And look, someone complaining, oh, that's so shit. You didn't answer any of my questions. Like, do you know how many questions are flying through here at a day? Like, I wish I could answer every single one of every single person's question. Like, I wish I could do that. But there's too much going on. So I do apologize. If I can't get to your question, I'm not being shitty. I'm not being a shit bloke. Like it's very, very hard for me to answer everyone's question. I apologize. In saying that, enjoy the day. I'll see you later. Go Chargers.